Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Sacred Sisterhood Podcast. Today, I want to dive into the conversation about simplifying spirituality. This past weekend, I went up to Vienna, Vienna, Austria, for a weekend to spend an initiation underneath a shaman, an initiation into shamanic journeying and power retrievals and so forth. And it was a very profound weekend. Uh, The shaman is Roll Crab, based out of Belgium, for anybody that's interested. And I learned so much from this man, but more so... He helped me remember the simplicity of spirituality, the practicality of spirituality. I think it's really easy for, especially, you know, like we're shifting into a whole new dimension. We're operating from fifth dimension where the the terms consciousness and frequency and new earth and expanding capacity, all of it, it is so used in our community and I think it's very easy for us to kind of lose the the true profound simplicity of what spirituality is. Spirituality is to be in spirit, to be a service of spirit, to walk in spirit, to feel alive as you're illuminated by spirit that we all are reflections of. And I just wanted to share today some of kind of my key takeaways from this weekend. In order to help serve you on your journey, because maybe you too, or maybe things are getting a bit too complicated in the spiritual world for you, and there's just all of these new terms that maybe you don't understand, or... Maybe spirituality is feeling more like a job or a list of things you have to do in the day rather than something joyful. And I know that that's kind of where I resonated with is that I could spend a few hours in the morning connecting to my spirituality and such, but I'd still, you know, walk away from my spiritual practices, though feeling connected, still feeling not very joyful and that's just been um, that's just been a big aspect of my own journey is overcoming periods of my life where I do emotionally feel heavy or disconnected, and I'll get it, get get into that more later on in the episode. But I really just want to share some of these principles or reminders that that. Either I received in a journey speaking to my spirit guides or that role talked about. Um, And I think it'll be very profound for you as well. So number one is to be the light. Be in your light. And this means connecting with your most radiant version of yourself every morning. And that doesn't have to take an hour. That could just be a few minutes dropping into meditation and just giving thanks for another day in this body, another day in this life, thanking spirit for supporting you and guiding you and blessing you with so much abundance and um, just seeing yourself walking into the light, you know, shifting out of that disconnected place where we're operating from collective consciousness, right, all of the energetic muck that's floating around us, to universal consciousness, the truth, the light, source energy. And you can do this simply by seeing yourself being enveloped in light and feeling that light ignite all of your cells and feeling your heart warm and open with that And just embodying that throughout the day, just seeing yourself as a light that when you walk into a room, your light fills the entire room and blesses everyone with with blessings, with what you wish for them, that you 
don't want them to see any harm and you want what's best for them and you want them to be in love and happy and joyful and receive so many blessings and abundance, you know, and for myself, I have, in my journey, I have struggled with, um, feeling completely in my light when I'm outside of my home, outside of, you know, my normal element. You know, if I'm out in the grocery store and there's a lot of people around me, I can easily get triggered into, like, feeling frustrated or overwhelmed, you know, like, just being surrounded with so many tourists. It can be a little bit overwhelming. And something that Roel said that was very profound is just knowing that wherever you walk into whatever room, whatever building, whatever scenario you walk into, it's going to be good. And with that, you're then creating the experience of it being good because you're setting the intention that no matter where I go, no matter who I'm with, it's going to be good. And just sending that energy, trajecting it out to then correspond with that belief and I feel like that's an aspect of myself that along the way I I kind of lost I kind of got out of touch with I got so serious and you know all the all these things that I needed to do for my spiritual journey to feel open and connected when some of like the most basic principles the most easiest simple principles are the most effective you know Um, mm. and another thing that he spoke about, a lot of people that are listening to this are are feelers like me. We, we feel a lot of energy. We can feel when someone's sad. We can feel when they're happy. We can feel the energy of the room and we all have that ability. It's just a matter of how much, um, you expand into it, like how much you allow yourself to feel and how much, um, how much time you spend practicing with it. And some people refer to themselves as empathic. I prefer not to label myself like that um, because we all we all are empathic. Just some are more tuned in than others based on their own experiences and their own journeys. But something that Roel had said that I found very profound that I will be bringing into my work to help people that are maybe struggling with feeling or just struggling to really feel connected is to feel the light through your skin, to feel the light of life through your skin. And so what that is then is you begin to shift into mindfulness practice. You begin to shift into your subtle body, into your energy field, and you begin to feel what your skin feels like and that area directly outside of your skin and you can feel if it feels light or heavy you can feel if it feels electric or it feels spacious feel the air outside of your skin feel the light through your skin something so simple and so profound and so If you're like thinking, well, like, how can you feel that? Think about, just imagine pouring yourself a beautiful bath, the perfect temperature, lighting some candles. And when you dip your toes in, you right away can feel the energy of the water. You can feel the warmth and the healing of the water. And then you completely get in and you sink down to your nose. Your body is immersed into this beautiful water and you can feel it. You can feel air the same way. You can feel the breeze across your skin the same way. You can feel the light of life, which everything around us is light through your skin. Mm. Feels good, doesn't it? And another thing that he spoke about is 
Of course we know that gratitude and joy are the highest of frequencies. This is the most expansive of frequencies. This is how we easily can quantum leap our life is when we're operating from a place of gratitude and joy. This is how we become a magnet to our desires. But how about bringing gratitude and joy into your meditations? Because it's so much easier to connect with divine wisdom and divine guidance and our ancestors and our guides and our angels when we're actually in a place of gratitude and joy because our frequency is expanded and we're able to access those beings that are operating at such high frequencies. Right? So... I think it's very important that we move our bodies before we drop into meditation. I like to do some sensual dancing or shaking my body or um, yoga as well. But for me, it's really about getting into my body and moving any cleared, moving any stuck, stagnant energy to make way for myself to connect. And I just find that I connect so much easier after I've moved. And I even noticed it this past weekend with shamanic journeying that the journey is where we, before we dropped into a journey, that we danced or we made music with our drums and our rattles, that it was much easier for me to dive into the journey much quicker than if we hadn't have moved. Then I found that I would spend a longer time to like clear the ego chatter. So we can easily then connect with joy and gratitude when we're dancing, when we're moving, so that we can then bring that into our meditation so that we're, it's much easier for us to connect with our guides. And for other streams of consciousness, you know, like beings that of the light that want to talk to you from like other planets and other dimensions, they don't really want to talk to a super serious human. (laughs) They much prefer if you're like playful and lighthearted and in a joyful, whimsical, curious energy rather than super serious like, what star system are you from, right? Because they're just going to fly away and, well not fly away, but jet out of there and go to a different human that's a lot more fun. (laughs) So it's much easier if we take that joy and gratitude into our meditations and also it's like a gift you're bringing a beautiful frequency into this relationship that you have with your team with your guides and also this is something that I've been playing with a lot more the last few months but I feel like because it was discussed at the at the shamanic journeying weekend, I want I want to share it with you. Imagination. This is something that as kids we were so full of creativity and imagination and like joy like wonder. But then probably around the time we went to school or like age seven or eight, it no longer was cool. We were told it's time to grow up. We were told our imaginary friends weren't real. And so we just kind of shut that part of us down. In our meditations and in our spiritual practice, we actually get to reignite our imagination and really play with our imagination and practice with it. Because with our imagination, our ability to see through our third eye or our mind's eye, we are creating new realities, new worlds, new dimensions, right? Like once you get deep enough in your meditation that your thoughts are no longer there and you've dropped into the uh, zero point field, the quantum fabric of infinite possibility, by you imagining your ideal future, what it, whatever it is that you're desiring to create, you then will begin to see that reflected in your reality. You will then be guided to create that in your reality. The right resources will come in. The right people will come in. The right information will come in. And you will be sent with, you'll be sent um, different lessons and initiations to help you expand to the point of achieving such. But regardless, by you creating that in your mind's eye, using your imagination to create it, you are trajecting that out into the universe 
so that your subconscious mind knows where to take you because your subconscious mind is running the show most of the time, right? So by us practicing with our imagination, we can create whole new worlds. And it also is easier for us to access that divine guidance, you know, the wisdom, the downloads, when we use our imagination to set the scene. And this is something that we played around a lot with this past weekend is using our imagination, right? So if you're wanting to connect with your ancestors, for example, once you get deep enough in your meditation, you can then create the scene where, you know, you're walking through a forest down a path and you get to this top of the hill and you look down and you see these elders sitting around a fire. And as you approach, you can feel their hmm, their peace and their wisdom and their knowledge. And as you get closer and closer, they notice you and they welcome you in. And then you sit down and maybe they pass some tea around. You all drink from maybe a mug of mug root tea or something. And then they share their knowledge with you. And then from there, some some actual guidance from your higher self or from your ancestors or from whoever might come through because you've already created the scene where it becomes believable for your mind. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're going to receive some info from my ancestors or from the elders, right? So if you're wanting to connect with like streams of consciousness, um, you know, from other star systems or whatever, you can see yourself, you know, flying through the stars and then like walking through portals and, you know, going down these hallways and, you know, stashing your conscious mind in in a safe place and then jumping into water and swimming through. And then you get to a point that spirit kind of takes over and just leads you the rest of the way. Once you've surrendered your ego mind where you're no longer in a place of creating it, then source energy and spirit just takes over and guides you the rest of the way. And so in the shamanic journeying, you either go to the upper world or the underworld. And when you first get there, oftentimes you're kind of creating the scene yourself. You're kind of manipulating it yourself, playing with it yourself. And it's like shooting back an arrow where as you pull the arrow back, you're creating your imagining But then suddenly the arrow springs forward, trajects forward. And at that point, spirit is carrying you. And at that point, that's where you're experiencing the journey where you're no longer creating it, where like just images are coming through or messages are coming through. And you're like, wow, this is this is really cool. I'm not I'm not forcing this. I'm not creating this. This is actually this is actually being impressed on my mind. Like if you had like a blank TV screen in your mind you're not projecting something up there. You're not projecting something up there. Sorry, your your guides are Im- impressing an image on the screen. You're not doing anything. You're not creating it. And that's kind of where we want to get to with our meditation so that we may receive the guidance and the visions and the downloads that we're, we're wanting, right? Is to get to that point where spirit takes the wheel and shows us what we need to see or tells us what we need to know rather than us having to create the whole thing in our mind's eye and like have our ego just manipulating things and creating, creating, but it starts with your imagination. And finally, finally, somewhere along the way, a lot of us tend to get a bit serious with our spiritual journey where we lose the fun in it Or maybe we just have gotten too serious in our lives where, you know, maybe we've experienced a lot of tough things. Maybe we had to grow up a bit too fast. Maybe we've been overcoming our trauma. And in all of that, we've lost our childlike wonder. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because for anybody that's on my Facebook or Instagram, you will have seen my post that I shared about this earlier today. In my shamanic journeying, there was, in two journeys, there was something prominent coming forward from my 
from my ancestors and from my team, my guides, that along the way, I had lost the childlike wonder that I was born with. You know, when I was a very little girl, I would spend all day out in the fields talking to butterflies and dragonflies and talking to the trees and just being out in nature. I felt more comfortable in nature than I did with people. I was very shy. And at age four or five, I got off of the the bus from kindergarten and my dad was standing there and he should have been at work and he had his hand all bandaged up. He'd gotten hurt at work and that was the day that kind of my childhood changed that I began to see a lot of struggle in my parents' lives with their health because it was only a few years later that my mom became blind. And I was raised in a very loving family, a very loving family, but a piece of my childhood was was lost that day when my dad got hurt because I started to take on the weight of the world onto my shoulders. And at a very young age, at age like five or six, I felt like I had to take care of my parents. And I felt like I needed to go to college to become an accountant because that accountants make a lot of money so I could support my parents. And that was so something that I put on myself at a very, very young age. And I became very ridden with anxiety. And um, I, I struggled with insomnia. And I just always had like this impending doom. And I lost that childlike wonder in those early years. And by grade grade eight, I was in counseling for anxiety and depression. I was always convinced that there was like ghosts in my room. And now that I'm on my path and much older, I recognize that I was an, a child that could feel other people's energies and that I could feel spirits. And I didn't understand it at the time and I didn't have a mentor that understood that to be able to help guide me. And um, just, I don't want to get into the full story. It's on my Facebook, um, so I'm not going to completely get into it. But there was just different experiences in my life that I lost, my, my soul fragmented in those times. And I left a piece of my soul there. I left a piece of my power. I had to grow up very early, very young, because I moved out at a young age. I moved, I was a rebellious teenager come the age of 16. I moved out and lived with um, an older guy who was a drug dealer. And so I spent a few years just in, in some dark times. And later on in life, I, I too experienced some, some difficult things that I feel like I dealt with it as much as I could at the time, but I also didn't have the consciousness that I have now. And so there was aspects of my spirit that were kind of left behind in those moments. And the life that I live now is beautiful. I've been blessed with an incredible life. I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed. And yet... I, my heart tends to be closed a lot. And this is for a variety of different reasons. I've been deep in a lot of initiations and processes in the last few years on my spiritual journey. But through it all, I lost that childlike wonder. And I became really serious. And I would just get glimpses of my spirit here and there coming and going. You know, I had gone through a, a sexual trauma a couple years ago that um, completely darkened my spirit. And it took a while before before the true, the real me started to come forward again. And even since then, I've still dabbled a bit with, with anxiety and depression here and there. It comes in bouts. And this past week in the shamanic journeying, we did a power retrieval. 
And I didn't go into this 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 week weekend thinking that that's what I needed to do was I needed to call back parts of my power and my souls from these different painful times in my life. But that's what ended up happening in in my journeys and a childlike wonder has been resurrected in me and for the first time in a really long time I feel whole. My heart is open. And I feel so in tune again with the consciousness and the intelligence of nature. And that's something that I didn't even realize it until now that it's been healed that I was disconnected from. Though I would connect with nature, it wasn't to the level where I could feel nature speaking to me through the dragonflies through the mushrooms on the mossy trees and trunks and roots, through the breeze on my cheek. And so it was a very, very profound weekend for me of calling back that childlike wonder that I had lost the day that my dad got injured. That all of a sudden I took on all the world's problems onto my little shoulders And I stopped being a kid. And I had no idea that that was still, I mean, I'd done a lot of work around that moment. But I hadn't done a shamanic journey around it. And that's just where the guides had led me. And that's just where my team led me this weekend. And so, and it's very interesting too, leading up to this weekend, I felt really called to start to write letters and give a voice, like speak to the versions of myself that was going through a lot of hard things. You know, a year ago, close to when this podcast started, I was still settling into my new country. I was grieving Canada. I was grieving my friends and family. I was grieving old identities of myself. And the biggest one was I was grieving the loss of a, my best friend. We were friends for 23 years and the move and my spirituality and the way I live my life caused disruption and and she ended things with me and I know now why why that was done um and I send her all the love on her own journey but that was a really really big thing that I was I was dealing through working through so I, I wrote her a letter I told her that everything's going to be okay. And I wrote a letter to the version of me who had just walked away from a long-term relationship where I had a mortgage with that person. And I was suddenly really seeing how narcissistic he was. And I, I had to deal with a lot of really hard things during that time because the the darker aspects of him came to full force and I was also dealing with my my trauma in Dominican at around that time. And it was just a very ugly, very ugly separation. I wrote a letter to the 16-year-old version of me that moved out of her parents' home and dropped out of school to work full time so I could pay rent and I finished my high school year. I finished high school through correspondence and I was living in a abusive relationship and surrounded by people that were thugs, I guess you could say. I wrote a letter to the version of me that walked finally had the courage to walk away from that, right? So it's very interesting that I was called to send my love to these versions of myself right before I went into the shamanic journeying a weekend, which ended up resurrecting a childlike wonder that I had lost. And I think that's something that anybody that's experienced trauma or just experienced really intense things or even just are working too much and, you know, just living like your common kind of Western lifestyle way of being, of pushing too hard and working too much, it's very easy for us to lose touch with that childlike wonder. And so at the end of all this, I want to give you this nugget of wisdom that if you are finding yourself 
constantly struggling with a closed heart and feeling disconnected or heavy or just feeling like you're so serious all the time and you somehow lost that joy. That I give you permission to resurrect that childlike wonder within. To get out in nature and see how the bees are buzzing and see how the bugs are flying through the air and see how the trees are talking to you and feel the wind on your face and just talk to mother nature. To wander through the woods with the wonder of a child. To allow yourself to laugh and giggle like a child and to write letters to yourself, old versions of yourself, to give them a voice, to give them love and to allow those lessons that you learned in that time to fully integrate so you may release her. Inner child healing is so powerful. And yet this one power retrieval was the most powerful inner child healing that I've done. And I can do this for you as well if if you would like some assistance. <clears throat> but I encourage you to just drop in and connect with those old versions of yourself. Even if you don't write a letter, just connect. Give her her give her love. Ask her what she needs. Ask her what she wants to say. Just give her love and comfort. Because that's how we can collapse these these charges around these ener- around these timelines, these past timelines in our life so that we can fully integrate ourselves and really come home to who we really are. I feel more whole today than I have felt in a long time. And that is that is because I lost such a big part of myself in many, many different times that this power retrieval at the shamanic journeying, it brought me home to myself. And even though I didn't really realize that I was that disconnected, I know now. I was very disconnected from my true being, my true soul essence, my true aspects, from my joy and my warmth in my heart. So I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to close it out here. Just put your hands on your heart for a moment. Close your eyes. And take a deep breath. I have joy in my belly. I have love in my heart. And I have trust in my future. And just say that a few times. Let that really marinate in. I'm sending you so much love and so many blessings. And if you enjoyed this episode, share it with a sister who you you know will appreciate the wisdom that was shared here. All so simple but so powerful, so profound, and so potent.